Hey guys, it's Rachel McLaughlin and this is The Final Whistle. Hello and welcome back to The Final Whistle, brought to you by the Rugby Connection podcast. Well, our next guest, fresh off a successful TikTok Six Nations, she's turned out for sale, she loves a turnover, it's Rachel McLaughlin. Rachel, thank you so much for coming on. How are you getting on? Oh, thank you for having me. I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. You are our first active Sail Sharks player. In the wow. History. There you go. Oh my God, there you go. I'm, Te- very, I'm very glad to be. Technically, you're the first one I've interviewed. Okay. We've had one of your teammates joined the girls show with Gemma and Anya, mm-hmm. but I've never interviewed them, so it doesn't count. Oh, well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> First question that we ask all our guests, just to get the ball rolling, what actually got you into rugby in the first place? Good question. Um, so I, when I went to uni, I was doing like judo was quite high level, um, and it was quite difficult going between. Um, so judo quite quite based in Edinburgh, and I went to uni in Glasgow, um, and so I kind of just started I, I was like I wanted to do a club at uni and um, to you know meet people and, and vice versa and um, a lot of my mates in my physio course were like oh we'll go and we'll try and rugby and I was like okay like go try it and um, didn't have a lot of time so I managed to like squeeze it on whatever night it was um, and then yeah just like honestly loved it like I think <laughs> I was absolutely headless like I I'd never I've never really played well I played ball games like I played football but I was always a goalie um and I played hockey but I was always a goalie and so there's a bit of a theme theme going here um the thing that's the most contact I wanted to do so yeah like I remember um at the end we did like a you like ran and you hit a bag and honestly I, I think I just launched at this bag um off feet straight away definitely but um no I loved it like I just love it I love the I love how physical it is um I think I came to to love how I love it, the team sport and I, I hadn't played a team sport for a long time because I'd done judo for so long um so I never really experienced it so yeah I loved that and I think that was kind of it like uni and, and all my mates did it and, and we've all played rugby since and they all play at West of Scotland so that's yeah basically that's what got me, got me into it. That's amazing and the skills from judo to rugby they're fairly transferable especially in your position at the breakdown you could Maybe not judo club someday, but you could definitely no, do. Unfortunately, I wish that was part of it. <laughs> Have you ever, um, in your early days, did you ever? Oh, definitely. I, I am glad that things I like games we used to play weren't video because my my god, I don't know what I'd have done. But yeah, I've definitely done like some thing, probably some illegal things. Not not anything crazy, but like, um, yeah, it is it's real transferable. And I think you're right. Like the breakdown is probably the biggest area, it's especially stuff like body height contact you know tackles as well I think being able to work at a lower height um and produce power kind of through that is, is definitely the biggest thing I've, I've taken through but not yeah, it took me a while to catch a ball it took you a while to catch a ball that's yeah. happens to all of us to be honest <laughs> exactly like I think I joked in our last interview I was really good at netball at school but I was terrible at basketball the only difference is you move with the ball <laughs> But that was a step too far. Yeah, it was a step too far. So I went for an egg and I was all good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, did you ever judo kick or want to judo kick someday? I know I feel like the answer is no, but oh, so, well, you're not thing? actually not you're not allowed to kick in judo. Oh yeah, I know it's more of a like um it's like wrestling mixed with it's essentially like wrestling mixed with like WWE. Um so you yeah. So you basically are wrestle. You wrestle and you try and get people on the ground, but at the same time you're trying to like flip them. So you can use your feet and stuff, but you're not allowed to like kick. It's more of like a like a scoop or like a trip up or it's um, yeah, it's a bit more more tame. And then you've got like kind of groundwork stuff, which is kind of more the crazy stuff because you can do arm locks and strangles and all that all that jazz. But I've never done that on a rugby pitch. I swear. I was done before. Have you ever like middle of a rug just? armbar um, no <laughs> I think I want to pl- I want to play more than I want to armbar so I don't want a card fair enough that's a good 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 answer very safe answer as well <laughs> um, 
let's just talk about the Six Nations because like, it was a success across the board, especially for the girls getting back-to-back wins. First time since 2006, I believe. Yeah. S- record crowds. Just How was it being in the middle of all of that? Yeah, it was It was honestly, it was such a strange Six Nations. Not in a, not in a bad way, just like, I think coming in, we obviously had quite a young group and we were missing a lot of key players that, you know, have played the whole time I've been playing and, and missing a lot a lot of them. And I actually think, yeah, so it was it was different going in, different people, but um, yeah, it was great. Like we just, we just had a good time like on and off the pitch. Um, and I think, you know, it, sh- it showed by the end, like by the end, the wins were amazing. Like being part of that was incredible. And yeah, it was just, it was, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It was just really fun. Like, we just had a really good time, to be honest. We enjoyed each other's company. Like, the rugby, you know, we, we kept going. We improved as, as we went on. And, yeah, there were some lower moments. You know, the France game didn't didn't go as we'd hoped. It was always going to be hard. But I think coming back from that as well, like, to go and then win against Italy the next week and then Ireland is, is something that I think we're real, real proud of. Absolutely. I mean, I was there for all the home games. And... I said it very cliche in the videos I, I did, but I was like, you, there is something happening here. And like the England game and the fans game, like scoreline doesn't tell the full story. They've been professional for nearly a decade. You have just like turned pro from like after the World Cup, essentially. So it's still very new to you. And now there's this new tournament coming up. WXV is done in three tiers, well, three different leagues. You're in number two, which means you're going to South Africa. How excited are you about going down there and facing new opposition, essentially? Yeah, like, really excited. I think, you know, previously we, you know, the way that the, the women's game and the structure has been is that you would, you know, you'd play Six Nations and then, obviously, I was lucky enough to play Sevens, but, you know, you wouldn't see people for six seven months until November which was really strange and it's it's cool that now it's just it's the whole whole season round kind of thing um and yeah like we've been to South Africa before and it's a really cool place um and yeah it's 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 mad like telling people you know who don't people in my life who don't necessarily follow rugby they ask about it and I'm like oh yeah we're going to South Africa for three weeks or whatever and like you know it's it's kind of mad um just kind of rolling with it and and taking it week by week month by month but it's um yeah it's really cool and I think it's exciting that there's something new and there's new opponents and that's I think too it's going to be massive for for the growth for everyone to play different teams and different types of rugby and stuff oh 100% who are you most excited to play against in the WXC because is it not it's like locked in for two years isn't it like who you've got this year is who you've got essentially for the next two just because it's new I believe I, I think so. I, I don't. I'm not entirely sure to be honest. Um, I'm, I'm very much a just powerful <laughs> play rugby kind of girl. <laughs> um, I don't. You know, there's people who are, who know exactly how many points you have to get through to get through to this, and I'm like, oh, I'll just, just play and let, let them deal with that. But um, no, I don't. I don't know them. What's excited? I don't know the confirmed. They're not all confirmed yet, are they? Because somebody. Is no, it Italy and maybe an Asian qualifier have to play each other. I think I don't know. I, I'm excited by it, but when you read into it, it doesn't make much sense. Yeah. So I believe I believe as of recording, it's always a key word to say. Um, as of recording, Scotland are the only con- well, and South Africa are the only confirmed teams. Yeah. South Africa, I think fourth place in the pack four is guaranteed and then it's fifth place in the six nations against spain because they won the euro championship mm, or yeah. and then there's like another i don't know there's a lot of playoffs for 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 this for the middle group there's a lot of qualification that needs done yeah that's what i think that's what i'd this, like we looked at the six nations i was trying to understand it and yeah i think it's you're right it's it's i think so it would be italy versus spain but even from, you know, obviously we don't know who's all going to be in it, but even from those teams like Italy, Spain, um, South Africa, they all play very vastly different rugby. 
Um, and I think that's, I think for me, there's not a specific team. It's just exciting that we're going to go up against very different styles. And I think the challenge that comes with that in in knowing, you know, your prep and knowing what we have to do when we face them and also how we play against them. I think that's really exciting. Um, but yeah, we'll just see who's in it and, and see what happens. But yeah, it's going to be exciting. Cool time, cool, cool times we play. Smash more bodies, there you go. Huh? Just smash more bodies. Yeah. <laughs> a, body, a body's a body. You can tackle. <laughs> I love that. Um, just bringing it back home a little bit how does it feel to you to play at Dam? because now the girls have their home you're not chopping and changing mm-hmm. which I'm so glad for I don't I don't like Scottsdale Stadium personally I think it's it's like it's got vertigo it doesn't go back the way it goes up the way and it's just very terrifying if you're sitting in the back what does Scottsdale or Dam? Scottsdale, you just because most stadiums kind of build out of the way and gradually yeah. get higher. Scottsdale just goes straight up. So if you're sitting at the back, you're just you're just looking straight down. And, yeah, Scottsdale was like it was really cool. Obviously, not being there in a while, it was cool because it, it, it's different to the dam in that in that sense. It's, it's quite high, but the other thing is because there's a track between the pitch and the stadium. Yeah, like that's what I love about the dam is that. It's like people are right there, they're right on the pitch, I think, which is so cool, especially when, you know, the crowd's absolutely roaring. Like, it's like they're on the pitch with you, honestly. I know that sounds like a cliche, but it's it's crazy. Like, I remember once when we played England last year, um, they were singing Loch Lomond so loud. Now, I told Helen Nelson, I said, that they couldn't start the match because it was so loud. I'm not sure that was true. I think they were just waiting on, you know, the, like refs and, and stuff like that but I was like no no it was so loud that they couldn't start a game but it yeah it's cool it's really really cool that and that'll stick with me forever so I, I love being at the dam um it's yeah and it, it was crazy with the the record crowd as well like going out around after and and thanking everyone was really cool and there was people that I'd seen in the crowd that you know I've known my whole life and I didn't know they were coming um yeah. And that was really cool as well, as waving at them and being like, oh, hi, like knowing that they've come and off their own backs and stuff. That was, yeah, it was cool. So I love the dam, but Scots and I love too, but we, um, the Glasgow girls, like, like I say, I used to live in Glasgow and we used to, you're saying it's high. We used to have to, in the mornings, we were like, we would do like single leg hops up the steps of Scotston. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so when you say it's very high, like I know <laughs> because we used to be like sprinting up them. We're doing like, I can't even remember right now, but um, Louise and Maz and CBO agree it's, yeah. <laughs> we, no, we thank you. Don't like, don't like walking up those stairs. Never mind hopping up them. No, or Never mind. <laughs> it wasn't fun. <laughs> you said that you studied, you were a, phys, you're a physiotherapist, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Do you? Can you heal yourself then if you get a bad injury? <laughs> or, you start, it's fine, I know what it is. I know what to do. No, not at all. I think... I think when I started the degree, I, I thought that that would work, but it's, yeah, it doesn't. I also think, like, I've not um, really practised in a while, um, so that's also a big part of it. But we've got, you know, we've got people on the team who, Molly Wright and and um, Lindsay O'Donnell, the likes of them are, are physios, and I feel like they would know better that I doesn't. I mean, roughly, like, you know, you know when you're fine. Yeah. Like, you're done, yeah. No, it doesn't. It doesn't help a lot. I've seen the ones, obviously, like the bad ones on TV, like when the knee goes the opposite way. I'm like, I'm not a doctor, but that's that's broken. That's buggered. Yeah. yeah, that's. Well, like when I did my when I did my elbow against USA. Um, oh, that game! Yeah, I immediately knew I was like, that's that's not good. That's not Actually, good. I'm, pretty, I'm I'm remembering this conversation now. Because mm-hmm. you obviously walked past with like your arm all slinged up, uh-huh. and went, "Are you okay?" Went, oh yeah, I'm fine. It's just a scrape. Was, That's not a scrape. Yeah. Not a <laughs> well, so after I was like, so at the time I kind of was like, I've not really spoken about this, but I was lying on the bed and, and my elbow basically went um like so I had it flat on the floor, and it basically went that way, and um I could feel it like not being in and then I straight my arm and it went like 
Uh-huh. And after that, I wasn't a source. Then I was like, oh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, and they tried to bring on like gas and air. And I was like, no, I'm going to stand up. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I, that's what I get like when I when I know I'm hurt. I'm like, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I was going down after the tunnel and stuff, saying, signing things. And people were like, oh, you okay? And I was like, yeah, yeah, like fine, fine, fine. Um, and I was like this up until I got the scan. And I was like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. You're all going to be back, I'm back. Um, and then it was it was quite bad, but it was it was a bit of a, a weird time because we weren't sure what, what was happening with World Cup in terms of if I could make it or not. And luckily, we we managed to to pull it through. But yeah, it was I was adamant. I was absolutely fine. <laughs> so what did you actually do, apart from like how it happened? What did you damage? Um, so I basically the the what you call it report was it was funny. It was huge. The MRI report but obviously it's I don't understand all of it so some of it was absolutely gobb- gobbledygook but um basically I dislocated my radial head um and then that had kind of come back in or I don't know if it was like a sublux or I, I don't I'm not entirely sure but it basically come out and then gone back in and then because of the angle so I thought that's all I'd done um and then but I basically tore the so that's actually I don't know if you see it. I have like a bruise there all the time now, and it's a bit of a weird. You can't see it. It's a bit of a weird shape here. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, basically, I tore the ligament here completely. I tore this ligament. I've done. I've done some other stuff, but it actually turned out to be all right. I think it looked a lot worse on paper than it actually mm-hmm. was for me. Um. So that's probably why I managed to to pull through. Uh, I think once like. I, we saw like three surgeons and they were like um I think well they they actually seen it on me they were like actually it's it's looking okay so but at the time when we read it it was like oh. yeah when any medical term when they read it you're like oh that's not good yeah so <laughs> the same when you get a car fixed you're like oh well it needs this and you're like well that just sounds expensive it literally <laughs> you read it and you're like oh no and actually yeah so it ended up fine but it's it is a bit um misshapen now but exactly more wound <laughs> i'm going to talk about well, you could say it's a career i class it as a career your tiktok page i wouldn't go stuff. as far as a career <laughs> what got you into making tiktok videos because everyone has a tiktok account but to make videos is a whole different thing yeah, I don't know, you know, I think when I first got it, I was quite um, adamant. I was like, oh, no, I won't, I won't make any because it, like, didn't really interest me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think Rona started making them or around that time when people were making them. And I was like, oh, that actually looked quite fun. So I think I made, like, a vlog one. Um, and I remember I had no idea, like, how how many views was, like, a good views. Yeah, um, yeah. So I put this video up and it was when we were in Dubai. And it got like 50k views and I was like, oh cool. And then my mate was like, that's that's quite a lot. And I was like, all right. And then after that, I think I put another one up and I was like, oh cool, whatever. And then it got like 2,000 views. I was like, this, how does this work? I was like, how does this, like some kind of, I was like this old man, like how, what, why does it not? Um, but yeah, then I just, I just kept making them and I quite enjoy it. And I think it's quite it's just quite fun I think it's also a fun way for us to like as athletes to show our personality a wee bit um Mm -hmm. like you'll know with Rona like she very much gets across her like fun crazy side like um on her TikTok and I think yeah it's just fun and and it's a wee bit of a hobby like I quite enjoy I now quite enjoy making like editing them so I made like a yesterday I made like a you know the Wes Anderson ones yeah 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 so I did that last night and I like edit it and stuff and I just I quite enjoy it and I think with that I've come to see that I actually really enjoy like media and I I, I find it interesting and, and in video editing and stuff I'm not very good at it but it's just kind of a wee hobby um and I think yeah it's just it's nice to I quite like making fun of myself um so I do enjoy putting up videos making fun of myself. <laughs> Dave, that's how I started. I got yeah. I was in COVID, well, pandemic, and I got really bored. I was on the app anyway, watching stupid videos like everyone does. And then I seen people talk about rugby, and I'm like, I could do that. Like, God, yeah. that is... 
and I remember even like looking back, like my first two months of making videos, all my videos start with "Hey guys," and I'm like, oh, I hate it. it's so cringy now. I hate it. No, it's like a tagline. <laughs> hey guys, this, and then like go into whatever I was talking about, but now I just drop the "Hey guys" and like, here's <laughs> your Scotland team to take on, and just like shout like a hype man. Yeah, fair. <laughs> But I got me to London and present yeah, stuff. It's crazy how these things take you though, like, isn't it? It's cool. Like you never envision it, but like like you say, like opportunities are, are mad nowadays in social media. So that is. I mean, even this here, like again, we got together during a pandemic, talk about rugby weekly, and I went, Well, why don't we get players on? Mm. And we've got like over 60 guests, we've had World Cup winners, we've had Wow arguably some of the greatest players to ever touch this and I'm like and uh, I'm just like this is nuts yeah and I always get this even today when it came up Rachel McLaughlin joined the call I'm like oh no <laughs> no no <laughs> I don't know why because I know I've spoke to you a few mm -hmm. times so yeah. I, know, I feel like I know you but it doesn't matter if I've known you for years or it's the first time we've ever spoke the minute it comes up like said persons join the column so I'm like oh god because I think because when I approach guests I have to be very formal mm -hmm. and I'm like even when I hit send to you I'm like I've spoke to Rachel she's gonna read it like yeah, okay Murray whatever <laughs> <laughs> no it's cool like and like you say like it's it's I think it's cool to meet all these I'm the same like when I meet players that you know have won World Cups so I've been around for a long long time and it's like you're a bit like oh Oh my god! And then you realize that they're just people. Um, oh, yeah. But like, yeah, there's there's some big dogs in the in the world of rugby. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I, think there was, I don't want to like put the name on them, but like they won the World Cup. I, I idolized them when I was growing up. I had them on the show, did the interview. As soon as we hit stopped recording, I went, "How did I get on?" They was like, "I oh, mean, you were great." I was like, "You are aware who you are, right?" And they're like, "I'm just me." I'm like. Okay, yeah, cool. You're not, but it's it's fine. It's all good. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, that's cool though. It's cool to who is this is a tricky one for you. you can do sevens as well, because we know you played in the seventh circuit. But we'll start with the, the 15 side of things. Who is your dream back row partners, both past and present? Oh wow. It doesn't even have to be anyone you've played with, it could be anyone in world rugby. <laughs> Oh, that's a hard question. I've got a lot of loyalties. This is a hard question. You play the back loyalty The battle was quite a loyal place. Um, gosh, that's hard. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll start with past. Um, <laughs> that's hard. I mean, am I am I playing? Am I playing? Yeah, yeah. You're okay. doing the full. You have to do the full eighty. For both, oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay, well, that's that's a shift. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got. I got to put Maggie Alfonsi on there. You know, oh, like yeah. she's a legend, especially um, as a number seven. Like she's she was class. Um, so she's got to be on there. Um, I need another path. I'm gonna put Donna Kennedy on there. I think she probably was a bit like mad like I think she would I don't know I've heard stories from the Scotland the old Scotland girls like <laughs> they they were like they just really went for it <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Dawn on there um and then oof, current that's hard do you know why it's hard because I actually really enjoy it. I honestly really enjoy playing with all the Scotland back rows. Like I really honestly love it. Like Rach Jade, Evie, like Lou, and she's in the back row. And um, yeah, like I I really, really enjoy it. I think people, current people, I'm like hmm, I absolutely love playing Jordy Fisher. I think I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. We have this just like six, seven, just some, like we just connect. We find yeah. each other on the pitch, like whether that be on the end of things or whether that be one of us is gonna start a fight. 
um yeah. we'll find each other and and you know if the other does something good we'll always hype each other up and stuff like that so we're gonna have to put g on there um and Trying to think of a big eight. I, I, I've, got, I I've, got my... a I've got a back row in mind, but it's okay. very bad. I would have, was it, was they call it RM squared? Yeah. So I'd, have, I'd have Rachel Malcolm, I'd have you, and I'd have Conks, I'd have Jade Conkle Roberts. Yeah. Yeah, that's just because I've seen enough of you play, I might that work. I like Evie. There's yeah. nothing against Evie, but I might, if you could have Evie or Jade come off the bench. Terrifying as well. Yeah, it's there when either of them gets on the end of a ball. Like wow, they. It's it's nice as like a a flanker or a seven, like chasing them down because you know you're there to keep the rock quicker to get the ball off them. Like, and if they get behind, it's so nice. It makes your job so easy, and, and both of them do that every single time. So, um, yeah. So if it's always good, and they make my job a lot easier when they absolute power through a line. I love that. Uh, it's, it's better when somebody else makes your job easier for you. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> We've got uh, a question yeah. from um, Ailey Brown's asked a question. If you weren't in the back row, what position would you be and why? Ooh. You would talk about this question a lot, actually. I ask people questions this a lot. Um, I, I feel like my heart and soul is, is made to play flanker or to play seven I think but if I had to I think I would I don't I think I'd quite like to be a ninth you know okay yeah okay. I was not expecting that yeah I think I couldn't be a hooker because I um I can't I can't throw a ball to my life I've tried I can't do a hooker throw it's so hard I don't have the shoulders for it um, I don't want to be a prop. No offence to them. They do good graft and I stand with them, but no. Um, I'm five foot, nothing, so I couldn't be a second row. Um, yeah, I don't think I would want to be... I don't think I would want to be a centre or, or, or a wing because there's, that's a lot of space. I and I don't... I don't huh? I thought you would have wanted to be like a, it's, a, top of 12, it's, a, it's a mixture between I think I would want to play nine or I'd want to play like thirteen. Ooh. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to be a twelve. I don't think I'd want to do a crash ball. Um, <coughs> maybe I would. Who knows? But yeah, I think I'd quite like nine just because you get to you get involved a lot with the ball, and I think sometimes I'm often like running lines off people and then getting in the ruck, and so sometimes I don't get my hands on ball that much. Um, so I think maybe yeah maybe it'd be fun. I don't think I'd be very good at it. But um, what about you? What would you what would you pick? For you? No, or for, for you or me. For I've, you. Played, I've played everywhere. I I don't play anymore, so I like, I've not played all season. So like, where did you play? Right through high school, I was a fullback or an outside centre. Okay. I stopped playing because I got injured, but I was like, no, I need to get back into playing. I went back last season wasn't fit enough to be a back so they put me in the forwards even though the forwards are actually to be more fit but anyway yeah. <laughs> I played both props so loose head and tight head I played in the second row I played in the back row wow <laughs> the only ones yeah. I haven't touched is hooker scrum half and ten that's the only ones I've not done sure. if I was to pick I'd be a full back as a back or yeah. a number or a number eight I really like playing okay. number eight that one game that was like yeah. the best game played as a forward as number eight. So you get, I mean, the scrums are fun to hear. I've played it a couple of times at club, and when they're like, you can pick the ball, it's like, yes, it's like, it's exciting. Well, it was weird because I never got taught how to play. They were just like, it was just on the team sheet. Like, yeah, Murray, you're at eight. I'm like, right. So Ooh. I tried, I, think, I don't even do it in the warm up, but during like the first scrum of the game, I did like the Dwayne Vermaelen thing, you know, like when he lifts. Like the the second rows up and then got stuck in. I was trying that and I was like, oh, "This is great." And the referee, went, you can't do that. I'm like, "Sir, sir, it's on the TV every week." I know. I do think. I think they changed the rule about the. It's like I think they call it the catapult or something. That like you can't 
that you you know how you eat cheese like that and bam yeah. whereas now it's got to be more like just get get yeah. in quietly <laughs> yeah i think it's because i've like over like made it over dramatic the first few times i was like yeah and then <laughs> Like, oh, God, <laughs> pulled them too far back or something yeah, like pulled that. you pulled them out the scrum. They're actually behind you. Sorry, mate, I'll pull in, it's fine, sorry. <laughs> something like that, yeah. But uh, I would, I've always said it, just for fun, just because it would be absolute destruction if you can put a back row as fullback. So, like, yeah. yourself or, or like, Jade. Because the mirror's Jade makes anyway. Mm. If you're giving her that extra 40-yard advantage. Yeah. Oh. yeah. No, it's true. <laughs> To be fair, sometimes people drop um drop their eight off kickoff or like returns and then they're there and it's that is ter- terrifying. If you've got a big eight, you, you see them catch the ball, they've got a 40 meter run up, and it's like you can see them looking at you and you're like, don't look at me. <laughs> to be fair, there is fullbacks. Not a lot of fullbacks, but there are some fullbacks in the game, both men and women, that I said as soon as they catch like, go for it. Just run. Yeah. Steps them and Chloe is definitely one of them. Mm. Chloe is yeah. one you step back and you're like, go on, Chloe, just bang, step, gone, spin, chip yeah. and chase I, I, joke, I joke with her that whenever she, so obviously, like when they kick it back, I just look at where Chloe is. Yeah. And I'm like, I can I can tell if she's going to go or not, like she's going to run or whatever she's going to do. And I literally just beeline straight for her because I'm like, I know you're going to break the line. <laughs> But I want to be with you for like when eventually, if you get down, you've got someone to rub over you. Yeah. But I literally be like straight for her, like if I know she's going. Um, you know, she is. She's a wee, a wee hot stepper, our chloro. She is. It's, my friend is quite new to rugby, and she was with me for a few of the the games in, in your campaign. And I was like, the running joke was Meryl was her favourite, mm-hmm. just off her name. Which is a stupid reason for a player, but anyway, my friend loved Meryl because of her name, because like who calls her child Meryl was basically the joke. That was the running joke. Yeah. And I was like, well, and then I was like, who's your favourite? And I was like, in my head, I was like, it's Meryl because of that reason. Mm-hmm. She was like, no, my favourite player is Chloe Roy. I was like, why? And she was like, I've never seen a player that can make something happen every time they get the ball. Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? Fair enough. That's <laughs> Fair. Enough reason. It's a bit more factual than her name is Meryl. <laughs> yeah, her name is Meryl. Yeah, that was the whole. That was a running joke for about a year until she started proper coming to more games. So, Fair. <laughs> strange person, but it's fine. <laughs> um, who's your dream sevens team? Because we did the dream back row. Who's your dream sevens? Goodness. You don't have to pick yourself if you don't want to. You could just rattle off. Seven. I'm I'm gonna not pick myself. Okay. Um, more because there's there's hot steppers out there. Okay. Um, I'm I'm definitely gonna put Lisa Thompson and Will Lloyd in there. Of course. Um. Yeah, I think Shona Campbell too. So I'd have I'd have Lisa in the scrum. Lisa Tomo. I don't call her Lisa. Um. <laughs> I put Tom in the scrum. I put. I put uh, Sean in the centre is a bit run on the wing. Who else? I put... Uh, oh, what's her name? Oh, my God. Um, the Irish... Not... I can't remember her last name. So, Lucy Mulhall? That's Cap- it. I put Cap- Lucy Mulhall. Um, who else would I put? I'd, I'd put a Fijian in there. For sure. Of course, you need to. Yeah, just for a little bit, a little bit of zest. Mm. Um, oh, how many more have I got? That's what one. You've got two, two more. Two more. I mean, you're missing a big fish, but it's, it's all good because Rona. You are. You missed a big fish, but Rona is definitely viable to cover it. Jazz Joyce. I was going to say Portia Woodman. Well, so I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. I'm trying not to go for the obvious ones here. I'm trying, as in some right. of them, like I'm going for the obvious ones, but I think I, it depends what you want, because I actually think I would maybe pick Mikayla Blight. 
friend of the show, Michaela Boyd. There we go. Yeah, so, I would. Yeah. I would maybe pick Michaela Boyd. I think I. Yeah, I mean they're both ridiculous. Like we, they trained with us for a while, and I had to mark Michaela Boyd, and I was like, I'm a back row. <laughs> and so I was like, this is not fair. This is not fair. Um, okay, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna go Michaela Boyd, and then maybe we nine. You, no, you, I, would, I would pick the Fijian nine. I would pick the Fijian nine. Okay. And then... Could be good nine. That was your dream. Huh? So put yourself at nine, because that was that's the position you'd like, you'd like to play. That's true. I mean, I wouldn't <laughs> like to. I, I would not like... I would not enjoy it, but it would maybe be fun for like a good game. Oh, I don't know who else. Maybe like... I mean, Madison Levi's fast. She's fast. Um, I actually, I think I put, I think I put Jazz in. You know, she's very nifty. Yeah. Um, she's another person that probably makes makes a lot out of not a lot of space. Yeah, I, mean, I think that would be my team. We're close to having a full sevens team, just off guests alone. I, I know. Well, we've got both Levi sisters. Okay, so, I would definitely, I would take. Yeah, I think I'd take Madison because my when she just gets on the end of the wall, it's crazy. Like yeah. she's off. I mean, this season alone, oh. 53 tries in the world. Ah, oh, that's just, you're a walking cheat code. It's, it's crazy. Like, even when I saw Alev Kelto and she got 100, I was like, 100? Like, imagine scoring 100 tries. Like, I don't think I've ever scored 100. Like, I don't think I've ever scored 100 tries in the entirety of me playing rugby. Like, let alone that's... 100 or just on the World Series. It's... Oh, dear, yeah. Show offs. Not fun. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the Levi sisters. <laughs> yeah, Michaela, what would yours be? Uh, I'm trying to think because you need three forwards. Maddie, no, Maddie's a forward, isn't she? Technically. Yeah. That's so, prop. Maddie. Is Naya Tapa a forward? Can she be a forward? She is now. I mean, it's all the same, isn't it? Really. I'm, I'm trying to do it off guests alone. I'm trying to show off to see who we've had on the side. Okay. Okay. Fair. You, so include we're including you. So we've got Mary, you, Night Tapper. Oh, I don't have a scrum half. Oh, I don't care. It's a charity seven. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> it would then be Tegan Levi, Rona, and Mikhail White. Nice. No, I'm missing one. Mm. Try to think who else we've had on or who else would fit that role. Mm. I'm running out of names now. <laughs> I've had a blank. I mean, you could play. You've had you've had Cecilia on, haven't you? Cecilia to yeah. Put her yeah. in. Put her in. Just chuck her in. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Take Naya out. Put her in the box. There you mm-hmm. go. There's your rugby connection. What did? Sevens. <laughs> it doesn't work. None of them's in the right position, but it's a charity event, so it's okay. Yep. <laughs> um, we've got two questions, but they're from the same teammate of yours. Is, is it? Okay. I'm going, to, I'm going to say the questions, but, and then I want you to guess who said it. Okay. So, first one is how often do you practice jackal turnovers in training? Oh, I don't know who would ask that. Can I? Can I know what team it's from? Yes. Well, the next question kind of gives it away. Okay. What's the next one? Favorite member of the Scotland team. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Listen, they all want me to be their favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't know. Is it is it Lana? Uh, oh, she got it. <laughs> yes, Lana. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, I'm going to plead the fifth on my favorite member of the Scotland team. I couldn't pick. The whole team is my favorite. Yeah, love them all. I have had five, but that's because I've interviewed four of them. Well, there you go. Yeah, my yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't possibly pick. That's the political answer. My top um, five in no, pers- in no particular order is, and then I'll say it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it is nobody but these three. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. 
Um, somebody asked me that like, in a video the other week, like, who's your favourite Scotland women's player? I, like, I mean, I know like half the team. I can't out yeah. one person. Yeah. I was like, I don't know, top five would be like Lana, Jade, Rona, Rachel, Chloe. Yeah. And oh, I'm like, I was like, because I, like, I know them. I was like, I, I'm like, I get on really well with them all. I'm not just, yeah. Yeah. I was like, and they're good players. It does help. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to be friends with a player that's not the best. Pardon? It's hard to be friends with a player that isn't the best, but you're like, yeah, go on, go on. You're not great, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah. You're not, you're fine. You're definitely world class. Don't worry. Oh. Oh, I wasn't I wasn't throwing shit there. No, 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 no. Um ooh, what was the other one? Do I practice? Yes, I, I do practice jackals and training. Um and how often do you practice jackal turnovers and training? <laughs> uh, you know there, there's only so much I mean I feel like there's only so much time you have to do that kind of stuff. Like I do, yeah, but um more so when you've got like individual skills time whereas like when you're in Scotland it's a lot of it is like team prep and there's a bit of time so yeah but I'm, yeah. I'm not surprised Lana put that. <laughs> Do you want to chuck anything about Lana just to get, get your own back? Um, <laughs> nah but I, I'm going to ask her who her favourite is. Fair, that's a good <laughs> one. It's probably Chloe. Yeah. I feel like it's Chloe. They've got that. They're... Well, if I asked her, she'd better say me. So, <laughs> well, even I, though I'm a bit of a political answer. If I ask are, her, I ask screenshot and send you the answer. Yeah, okay, deal. Because no, then we cause a divide in the Scotland team. <laughs> nah, we're, uh, <laughs> yeah, her and Chloe are real, are real tight to be fair, but they're, they're borders gals. All the borders gals are, there's something, there's something in the water down there, that's what they say. There is, even just like the players that it produces as well. Mm-hmm. It's mad. Like I think Tom was in the same year as Darcy, and at same school or something. Or it's crazy. Like, and I'm like, oh, did you know each other as kids or whatever? And she was like, yeah, like or at high school. And I'm like, that's, that's mad right. that you both ended up like doing the same thing. Um, I'm, th- I'm pretty sure like Rory Sullivan and Hog used to like walk to school together as well. I've seen it like genuinely. So who, I who's, never... your, who's your claim to fame? Who's my claim to fame? And who's the one you knew from for a while ago then? Oh, so well, the issue is I didn't obviously play rugby since I was 19, 18, 19. Hmm. Um, oh no, 18, it was 18. Uh, who's my claim to fame? Mine's is pretty bizarre as well. Huh? Mine's is quite weird as well because I don't, I'm not like friends with them. Right. And I, I, he knows me now through doing this, not from when I played rugby with them. Uh huh. It was Matt Ferguson. I, really? I played, like, I played like three games, like under 16 with Matt. Uh huh. And like we weren't friends. We weren't, we didn't speak. But now I, because of doing this, if I uh-huh. see him, he's like, you're right, mate, how's things? And I'm like, I've mm. known you for about 10 years. <laughs> I'm actually older than him. I'm two days older than him, which is... Oh, really? Um, it's more annoying now, considering, like, he's one of the best. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I know you. <laughs> I, I know you. You did really well under 16s, but that's not my point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I honestly I think because I came to rugby late I don't I didn't know anyone like I didn't know I know when I first met like Nelly and Tom on that I was like oh oh my god you like you're famous yeah uh, which is so funny now because like I like I used to live with Tom like it's it's funny how it comes round but like I never would have thought that when I first met her but um no I don't really have no I don't have a claim to fame I don't really um I'm trying to think if I know anyone from school that was that, that came through no, not that I can think of. No. It's a weird one, especially when you were into like what you said, like Lisa Thompson went to school with Darcy Graham. Yeah. And now they've both, well, Lisa's got over 50 caps for Scotland. Darcy's not too far off 50 now. Mm-hmm. Trying to go on machine and I'm just like, and you 
grew up together. It's ridiculous. It's, it's weird, isn't it? Because that's a different time of your life. I did go to school with, I didn't know this until later, I went to school with Jordan Edmonds, who has also played for like Scotland Sevens. Um, <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't realise that until a lot later. And I was in his cousin's year or something. Uh, but I can't I mean there have been quite a lot of sports people have, I went to Barbier and there was quite a few sports people that come out of it but I didn't realize until probably a bit later yeah fair yeah. enough it's all good mm -hmm. we're going to move on to getting to know Rachel as a person yeah. so favorite film <clears throat> I have two favorite films okay. one is about time and one is called Pride. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's a bit of a niche film. It's about like the coal miners and um, yeah. this like I did. I didn't see it until I was a lot older, but I just love it. It's a really nice film, and it's about like the coal miners, and then it's about this like gay society group, and they. It's like it's a true story, which I think is really cool. And basically, they raise money for these like coal miners and. I didn't know anything about the history of that and stuff until then. So yeah, I really love that film. And then about time, I don't know why I'm just, it's a bit soppy, but I just really, really like it. Um, but I'm not, I don't have the best attention span. So I don't watch a lot of films because I just cannot sit sit for that long. Um, but, but those two are films I would sit religiously and watch. So yeah, what about you? Um, I'm a big Marvel fan. Okay. So I say I just I label that as just one film. I know it's, mm -hmm. there's many many films, but I'm like anything Marvel, but non Marvel. I really like the Gentleman with Charlie Hunnam in it. Okay. I didn't think I would, but it, it draws you in, and it's very intriguing, and it's quite funny. There's some funny bits to it as well. Nice. I like I love Coach Carter. I. I started watching that the other day. My flat, when um, Molly Wright, my flatmate, made me, um, made us watch it. But yeah, I just I'd never seen any of those films till. But it's good. It's good. It's weird because I the first time I had to watch I had to watch Coach Carter part of my like English class at school. Huh? We had to make a report on it, so we all had to sit and watch it. And that, was the first first I, and that was the first time I've watched it, and I'm like, it makes no sense. Class, like, I'm better than Shakespeare. Oh, true, yeah. And I had to watch Moulin Rouge as well at school. That was a mess of a film. <laughs> Nicole Kidman and Ewan McGregor. It doesn't make sense. I've never seen it, actually. Don't. <laughs> I'm, not a film crit I'm not a film critic, but nah. Like, it felt like it's very jump. Like, they're, they're in love, they don't like each other, or they don't know each other, then one of them's dead, and then I've got kids. I'm like, this makes no sense. Shockingly, I failed that class because it was <laughs> right report on that. Um, no. It's in, France. it's in France. There you go. <laughs> the end. The, the end. Nicole Kidman did all right. Ewan McGregor's got a nice singing voice. The end. Happy the days. end. Okay. I would pass it. That sounds like <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> give it a synopsis of it. <laughs> Um, no, I quite like different films. It depends. Like I love, I love Grown Ups. I love Adam Sandler. So yeah, that's good film to fair. And like Big Daddy and all that. That's just classic. <laughs> I don't know. It just depends what mood I'm in. They're my, yeah. they're my go tos. Yeah, that's why it's hard when it's like it's hard to be like my favorite film because it's very mm. like times of your life as well. Like, different things. Well, I hate. I'm just gonna ruin it for everyone. You know, like when like a bank or somebody phones you, like, what's your security? Like, your security uh -huh. question. Like, what's the, the first film you ever seen at the cinema? Uh -huh. I hate answering it because I feel like they're laughing at me on the phone. You're about, <laughs> you're about to go because my first, the first ever film I seen was Finding Nemo. Okay. <laughs> so I'm like in my mid twenties, trying to like deal with like passport information. Uh -huh. I go, what was the first film you seen? Like, Finding Nemo. Well, sorry, I didn't hear that. Finding Nemo, the one with the fish. Shut up. <laughs> Bully me now. I don't like... And you could just... There's a pause. There's always a pause after I say yeah. the answer. I'm like, okay, that's you. And I'm like, you're judging. I could, you're I could, you're I could, almost like, I just wish you hadn't let me in. Just, yeah. Just, you know what? I'm not the right person. We'll try again later. It's all good. <laughs> I'm, 
It's all good. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> if there was a film about your career, okay. who would you have play you in the film? question they're all good questions i'm gonna pick i'm gonna pick um, i don't know actually i want to pick i'm stuck between rachel mcadams not because i think i look like her at all i'm not claiming that um <laughs> just because she has brown hair and she's in about time basically um or i would love to be portrayed as like ronda rousey but i think that's just because i wish i was like as hench as her so these are not the right answers. Um, you know what? Rosie's a good show. I could Rosie would be would be a good show because she. Do you think? Well, she, she's from like yeah, she's like a the background and she's an ass kicker. Yeah, I mean that, that's what I would like to be. So I, I think I would pick I'd pick Ronda Rousey because she's Ronda. just a boss. I mean, your reasoning for Ronda Rousey is a lot better than your Rachel McAdams one because she's yeah. got brown hair. <laughs> and she was in about time, and she was great in that. So, like, I've if never I wanted seen someone to do a good job, I know that she would. I've never seen about time. I don't well, even think I, I, know what, I know what you're doing after this. I'm watching about time. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm on my own today anyway, so it's fine. I could cry if need. Yeah, it's a bit of a crier. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Maybe maybe when the missus is home and it looks like she's picked it. Yeah, exactly. You can't be the one to have picked it. But oh, a friend recommended this film. You would like it, dear. It's not for me. I swear. I swear it's not for me, but I'll watch it with you just as emotional support. Click for the tissue. <laughs> so good. It was such a good recommendation. I knew you'd like <laughs> it. <laughs> favorite style of music or favorite song? Oh. I'm I'm a bit of a weird one. Like I don't really like set music. Like I like um sorry, that sounds like I'm trying to be quirky. Um I really like like um funk and kind of like yeah, it's a bit niche. Like I real like funk and a bit disco, but I wouldn't sit and listen to that in my room, do you know? But I do like I like something with a good beat and I think funk always has that um i quite like songs that kind of layer like beat on top of beat um so that but i, I also i've got real into into noah khan at the minute i'm a big fan but i get quite like music very much affects my emotions so i can't listen to too many because then i get really sad um so i honestly like i'm such a mix like i'll listen to anything from like taylor swift to like i say like funk disco um, things that are from like the 80s, yeah. 70s, like old stuff. But uh, whatever, I don't know. I just like, I like, I think I like songs more than I like artists. Yeah. You know? I think I'm the same. I stick, yeah. the artists I like, I do stick to for the most part. But like, if it's a good song, it's a good, like, if I shuffle my playlist now, it goes from like Metallica to Oasis to Stormzy to Shania Twain to Biffy yeah. Pyro. And I'm like, okay. Like I've got a, I've got a playlist called Seen It Live. It's basically mm -hmm. here's here's artists that I've seen in concert, whether mm -hmm. it's like Alex Savall or if I actually went to go and see them. Again, it makes no sense. It's like Proclaimers, Stormzy, Arctic Monkeys, Kasabian, Biffy Clyro. Yeah. I'm like, how George Ezra's in there, Louis Capaldi, and I'm like, that makes no that makes no sense. Sometimes it's nice though, because like you. You could be quite sick of one genre and something else comes on. You're like, oh, this is, I've forgotten about this song. I'm not a big screamo person. What scream? Scream like scre screamo music. No. Like, no. I like I like my rock, and I like indie and yeah. like alternative. But if you start screaming at me down a microphone, no, I I'm the same. That's... I need to understand it. I need to understand the words. No, I know. I I don't know what. There's obviously something that appeals to people about it, but not myself either. I mean, I had a guy at school that tried to teach me how to like do it without damaging your vocal cords. Oh. And I'm just like, no, just no. <laughs> no. It sounds like you need a very long drink of water and try again. It sounds like that it hurts, so yeah. stop doing that. Yeah. <laughs> do you have any tattoos? I do. 
Um, I have I have this giraffe. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Here, which I I got when I got some of my basically my sister and I had a really really good not good like so when lockdown came around she came home for a bit um, to Edinburgh and we just had like she painted this picture of a giraffe and we just had a really nice time together and and like I'm quite close to my sister so I kind of got it to just because it reminds me of her and, and that time and we just we just had a nice time together um, and I also have one, <laughs> I have one so me and my mates when we were at uni it's funny now we so there's a bit of a thing at Cali which is went to uni Mm. that the rugby team like you get tattoos together um and actually jade used to go to cali and so she did did this with her friends right. um and then they obviously did that and we were like oh that's cool like we should do something like that but we want to change it a wee bit so we, bought, we all got like rugby posts with, and it it's it's not it's not cool it doesn't look cool it doesn't like i tell everyone it's an h because my mom's called hazel um <laughs> but it's kind of funny now because i got it after playing rugby for like three months and then you know thank god it worked out yeah. um but so now it's i think it's kind of funny and it's i always got it knowing that it was like three little lines so if i ever wanted to get rid of it it wasn't it wasn't a big deal but yeah that one i much prefer this one <laughs> so yeah would you get any other tattoos i think yeah like i'm very much i wouldn't get one until i'm absolutely set on it you know um and for me like i quite like that they mean things like to my me and my life um, like I know some people just get really cool like artworks which is cool but um, yeah I think I would but I need to be I don't have anything right now I'm like oh yeah I'd love that and um, so I think until until that happens again we'll see but I'm not I'm not fussed about having lots um, just a few that's a good yeah. reason I like yeah. that I always ask because I have tattoos and I, I don't know why yeah. yeah I like talking about tattoos for some reason no they're cool Cool. they're like I think it's something I never thought I'd get and then I got this one and then I was like okay maybe I'll get an actual nice one <laughs> but I think it's weird though because I've got like one two three six no one right. two three four five six. yeah six mm -hmm. but like five of them four of them sorry were done before I was 18 oh really oh god Go on, you go on holiday a lot, it's fine, it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'd, I got my first one when I was like 16. Uh -huh. So I was still at school, but it's, uh -huh. it's on the back of my neck, so like the shirt would cover it. Uh -huh. But because I posted it on Facebook, I went right. back to and everyone's like trying to like rip my collar to see what the tattoo was. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, get off. <laughs> that seems like something that would happen at high school. Yeah. And they like they didn't believe they thought it was fake as well. So like, no, nah, it's not real. I was like, how would I post a fake tattoo on Facebook? Yeah, that's oh well. Wow, getting it sixteen, fair enough. I don't know anyone who's done that. It was I was more doing it to pull my parents' bluff. Right. So my parents have tattoos, so they were always like, if you want a tattoo, realistically we can't say no because we've got them. I was like, okay, cool. And there was a tattoo studio in the hotel we were at when I was uh -huh. 16. And I was like, oh, look, they've got tattoos, blah, blah, blah. My dad's like, go and see the guy then. Like, if you've got a design, see see what it looks like. Because they do, like, the Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Like, take a picture of you. That's what it would look like. Blah, blah, blah. How much would that be? And I did all that. And my dad's like, right, you're book you'll be booked in for the last day of the holiday. I was like, yeah, okay, <laughs> whatever, sort of thing. Thinking he's saying that to me, I run off happy. Oh no, our flight's earlier than we thought, we can't get whatever, some stupid reason like that. <laughs> Got to the last day of the holiday, I'm lying at the side of the pool, and my dad's like, right, come on, let's go. I'm like, for what? And he's like, you're getting your tattoo. I was like, oh shit, no, I was joking. He was like, no, no. He was like, no, it's paid for, it's all booked. Let's go. I was like, and I'm like, Mum? And she was like, no, you wanted the tattoo. I was like, I was joking. I'm sorry. <laughs> but well, I got done. Heart like hell. They all hurt. And none of it's yeah. fun. Thanks. It's that was probably the most painful one. Oh, wow. That's cool. The middle yeah, bit fine, so. but when they start like drawing eyes near your veins, I'm like, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it feels like someone's like scraping a dull knife over you. It's really like. Yeah. But then you want to do it again. It's just yeah, it's weird. weird. It's weird, and I didn't think I would. But then immediately after, I was like, I want more. There's one I, I need to get. I just don't have the money for it yet, but I will, I will get it to done. Mm-hmm. I, just, I want my little boy's date of birth on my chest. Oh, cute. But it's just, it's not even that expensive. I've ran it up and they've like, oh, it's a simple design. It would just be this. I was like, all right, cool. Mm-hmm. I just don't have the that extra amount to get it done. Yeah. Most, maybe one day. Maybe in the summer when it's nicer. Yeah. But that one killed because I, I got that done abroad. So it was in like 35 degree heat. Oh. The locals don't find it hot, so the doors were shut. No. I'm just like, oh, oh. But it, yeah. Just sweating. And they're like, come on, drink, some, uh, drink shoot a lot of sugary drinks and eat something because you're going to pass out. I was like, mate, it's not because I'm dehydrated. It's too hot. Mm-hmm. Open the door. Open the window. Put the fan on or something. Open the window. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, it's freezing. I'm like, it's really not. It's definitely it's, not. You're wrong. wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. I also found out that's the time I don't like Stairway to Heaven. Hmm? The song you Stairway to Heaven. Yeah, I don't like it. It's on right. for too long. And yeah. it's not long. I thought it was four different songs. I was like, oh, this is a weird play. I was like, no, no, that's the same song. I was like, oh, God. Just no. It's still going. It's still playing, yeah. You've changed tempo like eight times. No. Not for me. <laughs> Do you have any hobbies away from rugby? Um, yeah, like I think I really, really like gaming, which is a bit of a joke in camp. Like I really enjoy games. Like I, uh, I've got a PS4 and I love my PS4 and I've got a Switch and um, all through, oh, when I was growing up, like I love gaming, which is definitely a niche hobby. Uh, not a lot of, not a lot of the other girls like it, but I mean, people start getting into Mario and, and that kind of thing, but I really like, like, um, more like a, a bigger game, like a, a Red Dead, um, nice. Skyrim, like all that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but our team manager, Ellen, she actually really likes playing, like, Madden, you know, like NFL. Oh, yeah, right, okay. Yeah, so we play together, but she's um, she's getting better, but... Like um, I also really like American football. Like I don't, I don't, um, you know, watch the games because I don't have like a past thing. But I do like follow it. Um, and yeah, so that's I suppose that's another hobby. I like that. Um, and then I, I, the TikTok stuff's kind of become a little bit like that. Like I like, like I say, the editing does take a while sometimes. Um, so that's a, I do enjoy that. Um, and then I, I absolutely love coffee. Like we just like every single. Anyone who is over like seventeen nowadays, um, so I love going. I love going out for coffee. I love trying coffee. Um, I've got a bit of a coffee like reviewing page with my girlfriend. We just kind of it's not really for anything. Like it's private. We just kind of do it for us, but right. it's quite nice. So we rate coffees around Edinburgh. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So cool. yeah, I mean, yeah, like in. Not. I mean, I'm not. I don't, I don't have. A lot like I'm, a rugby takes up a lot of time. Um, but I do, I just, I enjoy like hanging out with people. Like I live with a lot of great, great friends. So yeah. we hang out a lot. Me and Anne Young are inseparable. We don't, we don't do anything not together. But it's nice because we've got that friendship that um, you, do, you don't get bored of each other. Like we could sit in silence and it's fine. So <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. That's probably what, about it. To be fair. What's your favorite? Coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker, but I know it's a big flat white all day. But this time, I'm, I'm not. I wouldn't call myself a coffee snob because I know there's worse out there. But for me, like the absolute cardinal sin is when you go into a coffee shop and you say, "Can I have a flat white?" and they say, "What size?" Because there's only one size of flat white. And so when we were in New Zealand, they were like, "Do you want a flat white?" But their flat whites are different, so they're the same ratio, so that you've still got like more coffee, but there's more milk, so it's just a bigger coffee. Whereas if I want a flat white, I don't want it to be about that big. Right. Okay. Um, but I'm I really, really like coffee. Um but yeah, I'm very much uh I want somebody at a shop to make it for me. 
Thanks. Do you yeah, drink? But... Do you drink tea at all? Or mm. the last couple of years, I've been getting into tea. I've been trying to. I don't really like it. I don't really like the taste of it. But sometimes in the evening, if I want like a hot drink, I'm like I'll have a cup of tea just because it's nice, and also because Anne loves tea. Um. So when we were we lived in a different house before, um, there was less of us, so we would have like a cup of tea every night, and it was a bit of a theme. So. So I've had the odd cup of tea, but I also did have a cup of tea last night and it, it honestly kept me up until about 2am. So I don't think I'll be having one that close to bed again. No, it's just because there's... I think it's more of a British thing. Like, there is a way to make a cup of tea. Yeah. And you see videos on it and it's... Like, there was one... I, I don't drink tea, but there was one I've seen on, on TikTok and it was, like, sugar, milk, tea bag, yeah. then the water. And I'm like, oh, what is that? And the other thing is I've watched a couple of Americans, not just Americans, but Most they happen to be American, and they were putting their, so they don't have kettles, and they were putting their mugs in the microwave. Yeah, yeah, microwave tea, yeah. Like, like I don't know if that's us being snobby British people, but... There's also, they, they laugh at us because our wash machines are in the kitchen. Yeah, and have you seen the new thing where they're like we call everything like an Indian, a Chinese, a Mexican. Oh, yeah. I didn't know this was a niche. Do you know what I mean? I didn't know it was a niche thing. They, so. Yeah, you think they think it's racist and all that. Like, mm -hmm. but it's a Chinese it's Chinese food. Yeah. I think they think we're calling it after white people. No. It's like no. But it's the same I was saying to because we I live with quite a lot of Americans. And I was saying that we don't I think they have a lot of words that generalize things. So, for example, if I was like, oh, I'm going to have a Coke, they would be like, I'm going to have pop or like soda. And I'm like, no, but I want a Coke. I don't yeah. like no. Um, Or like you'd be like, oh, I'm going to have a Fanta. Or you could say like, I'm going to have a fizzy drink. But, you know, you, I think we tend to say the thing that we want. We want exactly, yeah. Whereas they're a bit more like, oh, I'll have, I'll have a soda. But they also... I don't know why we're bashing them, but like they are very specific. Like eye glasses, where else are your glasses going to go? Horseback riding. We were talking about this as well. Yeah. Like, and they're like side walk. Like you walk on the side. Oh well, yeah, where else? Yeah. Are they gonna go? It's or I don't know. Blinkers because it blinks. I'm like, no, it's an indicator because you're indicating what way you're going. Yeah, but I, yeah, it's, it's it's we've had a lot of these chats because it's quite funny. Um, the, the funny, the funny one. You, I think I'll try and find the video, and maybe try and send you if you have you've already not seen it. It's mm -hmm. Jeremy Markson doing it, like comparing them. Oh, yeah. And he's like, the boot of a car. You call it a trunk. A trunk's on an elephant. It's, that's the only thing a trunk's for is an elephant. Mm -hmm. Petrol. You call it gas. I was like, you're calling liquid a gas. That that yeah. one gets me. I'm like, it's literally a different. Yeah. yeah, it's or this is more. This is a proper niche one. This is more for Scottish people. The way they say Glasgow, Glasgow, Glasgow. Glasgow. Yeah, Glasgow. I know. Ed, also, they say Edinburgh. Yeah, because it's. I I so my my partner is Canadian, so she she doesn't say that because she like some of her family's English, but mm. um. A lot of places, I think, like, so they call it, in, like, Pittsburgh, for example. Like, we would call Pittsburgh. But it's, it's <laughs> you know, it is Pittsburgh. So I think anything with B-U-R-G-H, like, they immediately, like, Berg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's other ones as well that I can't remember. But like, you hear it, and I'm just like, what? What did you say? Handheld mobile device. Your, your phone. Yeah. Don't, you don't need to break it. Like, we know it's in your hand. Yeah, we know it's yeah. a it's a mobile device. Like, it's your phone. Yeah, there was that one thing the other day. It was like, what if there was a phone that stayed purely in the house for the whole family to use? And this guy's just, oh god, she's on about a landline. Like, how old am I? She's just yeah. a landline. God, I haven't had a landline in a long time. My family do, but I don't. Yeah, my mum and dad do. I don't. And they no. never use it. No, I know. I oh, think people used to call houses, though, and nowadays, like, you don't call people's houses, you call them. Right. Yeah. 
I remember trying to, I can't remember who it was for. I approached a club to get a player and they're like, wait, what's your number? So this is the same number I gave you because mm-hmm. that's my number. And they were like, and your, and your business number? I was like, what? I was like, just phone me. I was like, I don't have a business mm-hmm. phone. Like, there's, mm-hmm. not a, there's not a podcast phone with all yeah. these players and agents. Not. I was like, it's my phone. If you text me back, I save your number and it looks cool that I have Rachel McLaughlin, I have Victor mm-hmm. Matthews number. Mm-hmm. Just weird. It's like David Campisi's in my contacts. Yeah. Wow. Cool. I don't know if I'd phone them. I ever use it to phone them. But yeah. No, but it's cool to have it. Sure. Good brag. Ah, oh, there's one. Who's the most famous contact in your phone? Somebody asked me this the other day. I actually don't think I, I don't really, I don't, I'm terrible for not saving people's numbers. So like WhatsApp chat. Just like I, people I've known for years and they are still like plus seven. And I'm like, oh, it's terrible. And then when I have to text them, I have to then go into a chat and like, and then I'll add their contact. But <laughs> probably, it's probably someone like, it's probably Rhoda Lloyd to be fair. She's probably oh. the most, or Rachel Rich Malcolm, someone like that. I don't even have Rhoda's number. I've had, we've had her on the show. We've kept in touch. Mm-hmm. We've not got her number. Yeah. Rona, if you're listening, sort it out. <laughs> social media is easier. <laughs> it's easier to have it on social media. Yeah. Just, that's how I see it. No. Um, where is your dream holiday destination? Uh, I think I'd like to go to Japan. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think... I would love to go to Japan and do judo, but I think I've forgotten so much of it now. I'd be terrible, but um, oh. Japan, I think. And I love, I love, like, poke, I love sushi, I love, I really love Asian food, so that would be good. There's tea a lot. Fair. That's a good reason, yeah. What's your, favorite, what's your favourite style of food? Oh, I could eat poke for the rest of my life. What's that? Um, so it's, everything it's from Hawaii. Um, but it's basically like um, it's kind of like sushi, but taken apart. So it's like you have you have like raw salmon or raw tuna, or whatever, mm-hmm. and then you have like edamame, maybe like seaweed on a bed of like rice, and then I really like it's kind of like spicy mayo with it, and then like some some onions, like some really really grilled onions, maybe some like. Spring onions, I, just, I love it. I, go, I don't know why, I just absolutely love it. It's so good. It's good. I'm not a fish person. No. Anything out of the water, you just can keep it. You just can keep it. I don't like, I don't even like scampi. Really? Oh. I'm, I, I'll happily try an array of like beef, pork, or chicken dishes. Uh-huh. But the minute somebody's like, oh, it's fish, I'm like, I don't want it. I don't know what yeah. it is. I don't know if I had like a bad experience. With Have fish you ever had raw fish? To no. be fair, it, I would say it's very different. The thought it's, of it freaks me out. Yeah. It's it, honestly, I think eating raw salmon is like eating a cloud. Like it is so <laughs> nice. It is un, oh, unbelievable. I can't even explain how good it is. I, 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 know, you, I know you could eat like raw beef. Mm. I don't know if you could eat pork. I don't know how the rules on pork. Um, I don't know. I think to be fair, you can eat what's it called? Um, the French dish. Well, I can't remember what it's called, but like the raw steak. Oh, very or, or, something like that. Um, I've had that. It's not very nice. But mm. that was, I think, raw fish. Mm. And then there's Stunning. chicken. Then there's chicken that needs to be cooked. There's no. There's no arguing that one. No. I think, I think only. And it's it's like salmon grade, uh, sushi grade fish. You can only eat raw, so you can eat like a a fillet. Yeah, not just like yeah. pick up a fish and hang. I, I reckon people do it. Probably do. There's weird people out there. To be fair, yeah. I just remember the, the whole chicken thing. I remember watching like a Gordon Ramsay thing, like when he mm-hmm. goes in restaurants and he asks for a chicken dish, and the waiter went, "How do you like your chicken?" He was like, "Pardon." Cook. Cook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like how do you like I get in trouble for that? How do you eat your steak? Burn. Burn it. Cook it. Cook it right through. I don't want pink. Oh no. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Actually that's, no, the one that's right, a before, right before well done, I like as well. Medium no. top. 
I want it to be like raw in the middle. Blue, like one, no, two. No, like probably if I was here, I'd ask for it like right. Probably it depends where you are. I think if you ask for it in France, you have to ask for medium rare because if you get asked for rare, it will be blue, and then the blue will be like still moving. But yeah, oh, no. here, I think it's a texture thing too. Like I enjoy like raw, raw yeah. stuff. See, because my, my granddad used to eat his steak blue. Mm. And the joke, well, my, like my mum makes a joke, like, a vet can bring that back to life. Yeah, you could resuscitate it and it would yeah. it'd be moving. No, nah, I'm all right. <laughs> I'm just gonna, just say, I to, sorry, I was just going to say I'm going to text. Okay. Um, um, I just, I'm having a meeting at half past, but I'll push it back. Oh, that's fine. We'll, we'll confirm that up quickly then and just roll off. If you... There's no... Uh, sorry, I don't need to rush you. Yeah, no, fine. That's all good. I don't know. I just like the flow, so it's all good. Oh, no, me all... too. I've been enjoying the chat. I'm, I wish I didn't have a meeting, but I do. Oh, yeah, fine. Um, Favourite pizza topping? Um, Hawaiian and then add pepperoni. It's always the food that breaks up these friendships. <laughs> It's so good. It just is. I don't know why it's good. It's just like it adds a little bit sweet and then it add a pepperoni as well. It makes it a little bit spicy. It's so good. So no, good. no pineapple on pizza. Sorry. No, it's, it's a questionable decision. I accept that. I accept it. And I also accept that it's wrong. It is wrong, but I just, I don't care. It's too good. I've, I've got one for you and I've, it's something I've learned from speaking to Aussies and Kiwis. Now, I find this completely wrong. Pineapple ring on a burger. I'd have it, but um, I'd try it. I'd, no, I've never had it. I'd try <laughs> it. But I don't think, I think that's too much, like, juice. Well, they, apparently you can grill it as well. Like, cook mm. it, like how you would cook I mean, a burger and then assemble it. I'd try it. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't sound nice. Mm. No. There was another one I learned, but that sounds horrible. Condensed milk on toast. Again, I would try it, but I don't. Oh, what? No. I would. Why not? Why not? <laughs> I, I think there's a lot of, like, most food things I would try. But uh, it's a bit like they have in, in the sweet things on toast, sometimes is actually really nice. So they have, like, a thing called hausla in Amsterdam, and it's basically sprinkles on toast, and it's actually delightful. No, not fairy bread. Australia, yeah, Australians do that. It's like you butter bread and like really cheap bread, butter it and put uh, hundreds of thousands over it. Yeah, well, it was essentially like that, but I think it melts a little bit more. But yeah, oh. it's really good. So fair enough, fair enough. Maybe. What is your go to post match drink? Now, I don't mean Powerades or protein. <laughs> big, big when you and the girls are out. Oh. Good question. My favorite, my favorite drink, like um, like a cider, mm. is I love Krabby's raspberry. I think it's actually so good. I love it, but I couldn't have loads of them because it's quite sugary. But I don't find that it, like coats your teeth in the same way that like dark fruits does. Yeah. Um, but oh, post drink, I don't know. I'm I'm definitely more of like a gin and tonic girl than like a pint because. I just, I can't, like, I get so bloated. I can't, like, I, but sometimes a pint's nice, like, on a nice warm day and stuff, but I'm not a massive drinker anyway, Um, but if I was going to, it would be, or, like, a cocktail, maybe, like, a espresso martini, very good. That's fit. Coffee, of course. Of course, coffee, again. It starts your night well as well, so it wakes you up. That's fair. I always yeah. start with, a, I'm old school, I start with a Guinness. Fair. I, I've never had a Guinness. I think I tried it and I was like, this is like soup. Um, thick, it's yeah. thick. So I, I one day I'm going to try it because I want to do the, you know, the sip thing where you put it before the, below the yeah. G or something. So I'm going to try that. But My uh, part, my partner's friend challenged me that too a few weeks ago. Uh-huh. She was like, could you split the G? I was like, yes. And she said, no, I'm, I've got, what? she was like, I've got one different for you. I was like, what? So there's a harp, like the logo. Before, uh -huh. before the letters she was like could you like split that so it sits uh -huh. on top of the letters oh turns out yes I can 
I found that <laughs> yeah, yes, I yes, I can. <laughs> I didn't need, I didn't like intentionally. I was like, I'll give it a go. I went like that, and oh, there we go. Happy days. Yes, I can. But yeah, um, yeah I always start on a Guinness and then work my way to like Jack and Coke or Morgan's or yeah. I'll drink anything. I'm, yeah, I'm very easy on a night out. It's quite like a Craig David. Have you ever had one then? Oh, what's that? It's it's literally a shot of tequila and then a shot of pineapple juice. Yeah. Okay. It's niche, but it, it's like, I like tequila, but the afterburn is horrible. And so if you have pineapple juice after, sorry, there's a lot of pineapple in this, this today. There's a lot, um, yeah. <laughs> um, it actually like totally takes away the burn. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I'll give that a go. Yeah. Probably one time. Sometimes they don't know what it is, though. You have to tell them. I'd ask for it individually. Uh, final question for you today. Okay. One thing you'd like to be remembered for? Wow. <laughs> it's a deep question. <laughs> I know. Can I do one as a person and one as a rugby player? Yeah, you're the guest. It's the okay. yeah. I don't, listen, I don't, I don't know how much leeway this had. No, it's got all um, the leeway. You're, you're our guest. You can decide however you want it. I think as a person, I would like to be remembered as being like kind to everyone like including people um and I would never want people to think like I would always want people to think that I'd be the same with everybody and give everybody the same amount of time and and um, and kindness and I think as a player I would want to be remembered as like just relentless in work I think it's something that you, you can always do is is work great and I think that's something I, I I strive to achieve and just be remembered for just like God she never stopped or something like that and I think that's a very seven trait um, and something all the great sevens kind of have so that's definitely I think I agree with, I agree with that from watching you play you are definitely a workhorse you're just everywhere like I'd hate to play against you because you're just there and go away. <laughs> I'd, end up getting, I'd end up getting sin bend or red card just because of how like frequent you're there. Just go away. <laughs> just let me run with it a little bit. <laughs> that's the hope, yeah. I think that's it. You just want people to I think that's that's probably encapsulates it. Just being everywhere, I think, is is what you have to strive to achieve, especially as a seven. Um I love that. Well, which isn't easy when you're tired, but so you I don't always get it right. I can try. The effort that ma- the matters. Mm. If exactly. people know that you're trying, then that's all you can ask for. Exactly. Exactly. Well, the book is now closed. <laughs> Rachel, you've absolutely smashed it. And oh, thank you. This has been real fun. It's been nice yeah. to get to know you too. Yeah, we've we've kind of had like the five minute conversations after a match, and then you kind of get rushed off or a child. Rachel, please don't want your talk or your picture or something. Or yeah. also, thank you for sending my talk. Thank no, you. of course, of course. I I do like all the. I'm enjoying the three, the three, the three um, shirts. It was only going to be two, and then I, I remembered you played seven, so I was like, oh, there's an extra one. So there you go. <laughs> Throw another one in. One you wore as well. That would be the. Yeah, I think yeah. I think we wore that for not the commies, but the one before that. Because we got our names on the back, which was really cool. Because I've never had that in my life. I should use the comms. I've got the comms top up still. Yeah, nice. Oh, yeah, that's mm-hmm. good kit. But yeah, you've absolutely smashed it. And apart from the food, it's all good. Yeah. We'll but, we'll put it aside. Put yeah. it aside. Never Film, has his- music, drink, rugby. Yeah, all ticking all the boxes. Just we can't go for food. Yeah, that's all. Right. Um, I'll meet you after you fit. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But this has been the final whistle with Rachel McLaughlin. We will see you next time. <laughs>